Hello there guys and welcome back to another Epic Inexorable Maths video. In this video we've got a very, 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 very important idea. A very important theorem. This theorem is called the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. Okay, and calculus is differentiation and integration. They are, they're both, they both make up calculus. So um, a theorem that is called the fundamental theorem of calculus. So basically the fundamental theorem of integration and differentiation. It's quite important. And it's very, very easy to understand what it is because it seems like it might be complicated. The theorem itself simply states, and this is something that you probably already know, it simply states that integration and differentiation are inverse operations. They're inverse operators. They do different things. They are opposites to each other. So if you integrate a function and then you differentiate that function, it brings you back to where you started. So you can think of integration and differentiation almost like how you can think of timesing and then dividing or adding and then subtracting the same numbers. So times something by five and then divide it by five. Where does that bring you? exactly back to where you began. Add two to a number and then take two away, or take away three and then add three. Where does it bring you? Again, it just takes you exactly back to where you started. If you integrate something and then differentiate it, it does the exact same thing, and vice versa with a plus C. If you differentiate something and then integrate it, you are going to get the same thing again, but with a plus C. That's all the theorem says. But how do you actually show it? We're basically saying, why is the gradient function of a line when you integrate it going to give you the original function back? Why is the area function when you differentiate it going to give you the uh, original function back? And why are these things related, differentiation and integration? Well, we can actually show that using a little bit of geometry. So there's plenty of ways to prove the fundamental theorem of calculus because it's such an important theorem. But what we're going to do is we're going to do um, what I believe to be the easiest possible way to prove this thing. So what you do is you start off by looking at a graph. Okay, This is very graphical, so you can see what's going on. And I'm going to draw some arbitrary curve. Okay, it doesn't matter what the curve looks like. I'm going to call that our f of x. So y equals f of x. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It's just arbitrary. It's some random function of x. could be anything. And we're going to say it's continuous. I'm going to say it's going to have no breaks in it, anything funny like that. It's just normal, normal graph, nice and smooth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to label some arbitrary x point here, and I'm going to label some arbitrary x plus h, right? This is very similar to how we start our differentiation proof, right? Now, the difference is what I'm going to do is I am going to draw, uh, essentially, it's going to be a rectangle, but this rectangle can have two different sizes. So if we look at the uh, y coordinate when um, the x the, the corresponds to the coordinate of just x and arbitrary x, that gives us because y is f of x, that gives us f of x. And the y coordinate that corresponds to x plus h on the x axis is simply going to be f of x plus h, right? Of course, because y is f of x. So if you put x plus h in, you get f of x plus h out. Now, here's the thing, right? We can create an inequality or a set of inequalities based on the size of the rectangle that is produced um, between these two dotted lines, because right now it's not a rectangle. The rectangle can take two different values. The first value is an underestimate of the rectangle's area. It's this area here. We can clearly see by looking at this that the area between x and x plus h is larger than the rectangle that I have drawn in, right? The true area is larger than that. So that must be an underestimate of the area underneath that graph in that, at that point, okay? Now, likewise, we can draw another rectangle that is going to be an overestimate, right? Now, if we shade all of this in, we can clearly see that this rectangle is much larger than the true value of um, the area underneath that graph. There's there's a bit that's there's more than you want. So what we can do is we can figure out how, what what's a way to express both of these rectangles to begin with. So the the uh, smaller rectangle which which stops here. What's the height of that rectangle and what's the width of the rectangle? Well, on a small on an underestimate, we've got a width 
Well, we're between x and x plus h. So the width must be x plus h minus x. It must just be h. It's got a width of h. They both do, actually. So what we can say is we want the area underneath this graph. I'm going to denote the area underneath this graph just using the letter capital A, okay? That is the area underneath the graph between x and x plus h, okay? And I'm going to say that that must be either less than, and we need... What's the area of a rectangle? It's the width times the height. So the width is h, and the height is f of x, isn't it? That's the height of it, because it corresponds to that f of x coordinate on the y-axis. So the height must be f of x. That's an underestimate. So we're saying the true area is going to be either equal to or less than that area of the small rectangle, right? Now, what we want to do at this point is look at our overestimate. Our overestimate, remember, is the area of this whole rectangle here. So let's come up with an expression for this rectangle. This rectangle must be larger than the true area, which we're denoting by A. It must be larger in reality. So A must be less than or equal to the area of this thing here. And this thing here also has a width of H. Okay, H is our arbitrary distance here. Um, and the height of this rectangle corresponds, of course, to f of x plus h, doesn't it? Brilliant. And that's because x plus h is this height here, so I haven't really drawn it completely accurately, but you can see that the height would be f of x plus h. Brilliant. So what we're saying at this point, let's just sort of gather what we've done. All we're saying is the true value of the area underneath this curve, the real value, the exact definite value, is somewhere between h times f of x and h times f of x plus h. And this goes for any arbitrary point underneath the curve that you want. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have this equation, we're going to look at this equation. Let's divide everything by h, okay? So what we get is f of x must be less than or equal to a over h, which must be less in and of itself less than or equal to f of x plus h. We don't need to worry about the inequality sign changing. We don't know what the value of h is, but we're going to define h as definitely being a positive number. It will not be negative. So when you divide by negative number, the inequalities can change. It will not do that because h, we're saying, is clearly to the right of x on that graph. It must be bigger than zero. It's not equal to zero either, so we don't have any problems there. That is our equation. It all works. Brilliant. Now, what we want to do now is we want to use integration to actually figure out the real area underneath the curve, okay? So remember, the area underneath a curve is given by the integral between the two points. So on the lower bound, you know, the left-hand side, it's x, and on the upper bound, it's x plus h. There, there are limits of integration, aren't they? Because you can see here, it's those are the limits of the integration. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use the normal formula for integration, which is f of x dx. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the value of this integral. So what this is, is this is equal to, and we're going to denote the integral of f of x because we don't know what it is. We're going to denote it by capital f of x. That's going to be the integrated function of f of x, okay? So all of my f's look a little bit capital, but I'm going to, that's a lowercase f, just trust me that we've got right there. This is going to be an uppercase f, okay? So it's a bit confusing, I guess, but this is an uppercase f, and it's all, all it is is that it's upper, uppercase f of x, and we evaluate between our two limits. So that f of x is not the same as the f of x in the integral. It's the integrated function. This is equal to capital F, and we substitute our limits in, so replace x with x plus h, and replace x with x, so it's just take away f of x, brilliant, and that is our uh, expression for a, basically. So, what we can now do is replace that definition of a, because we're saying that this is a, that's the, the, this is the real area underneath the curve, the actual exact area. So we can now replace a in this equation at the top here with that definition of a. So using that, we can say that f of x, that's a lowercase, must be less than or equal to capital f of 
x plus h minus capital f of x divided by h which must be in and of itself less than or equal to f of x plus h just like that so all we've done here is we've taken this equation at the top this one here and we've replaced the a with the actual value of a that we definitely know to be true okay which is f of x plus h minus f of x okay brilliant now what we want to do and this is really cool is we want to take the limit of all three of these terms as h goes to zero the reason why we do this you'll see in a second so the limit as h goes to zero and you're allowed to do this of the first term which is f of x must be less than or equal to the limit as h approaches zero of all of this so f that's a capital f capital f of x plus h minus capital f of x divided by h which must be less than or equal to the limit as h approaches zero of lowercase f of x plus h okay now we individually need to take all of these limits now the first one's really easy this is the limit as h approaches zero of f of x well there's no h in it so it doesn't change so this is just equal to f of x lowercase this must be uh, less than or equal to now hold on a second let's just take a quick look at what this is in the middle does this look familiar in any way to you the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h ha huh, that's interesting that's very interesting so that looks exactly like the definition of the derivative so we can write this this is literally the exact formula for the definition of the derivative it's the exact formula so we can write this as the derivative of capital f of x and this must be less than or equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h well that one is just f of x because h goes to zero so it's just f of x plus zero which is f of x so we just get f of x here and that's a lower case now look at what we've got right now the derivative of the integral is somewhere between or is exactly equal to really f of x and f of x because on the lower because what we're saying right now is that f of x must be less than or equal to the derivative of f of x which must be less than or equal to f of x so just based off this formula this is very clever isn't it because you can see what's happening right now the only possible value that the derivative of capital f of x can possibly have to make this equation be true it's being squeezed from both sides it has to be greater than or equal to f of x but less than or equal to f of x from the other side so the only value that it can possibly hold for this equation to be true is that the derivative of f of x the capital f of x must be equal to the original function what this is saying is that the derivative of the integral is equal to the original function that's what this is saying this is saying capital f of x the derivative of that is equal to original f of x that is proven that is the fundamental theorem of calculus what we have just said is that if you have an integral and you differentiate it it gives you f of x back and that is absolutely profound thank you guys so much for watching highly appreciate it and i'll see you in the next video cheers